Barry John Raybould has created this um, sort of a critique method that I'm going to use tonight because of a lot, a lot of the paintings I haven't actually seen in person. So this gives you more of a general overview of what I look for in my own paintings, what, what uh, like a, a design theory behind paintings and just general, you know, color theory. And I'll go through the list so that you can, you can get an idea of how I've broken it down. I'm going to share my Photoshop screen. Okay. So can everyone see the poetry yeah. title? Yeah, okay. So his, his, the structure is based on, on art, poetry and music. So when you're looking at a painting, he's broken it down into sort of poetry being the illusion, how it's drawn, its form. The poetry is the concept. So whether that be emotional, aesthetic, descriptive, narrative, an idea or a message. Like, I mean, everyone, it, art is personal. So everyone has a different reason to paint. And for me, it's, it's, a, it's a journey through discovery and learning about yourself and about <clears throat> learning different skills and, and how, how to better your skill set. So this kind of breakdown really kind of clarifies what's involved in a painting. And I will go through each one of these if they're relatable for each painting. So I'm gonna do one painting of each person's and then if we have time, I'll get you guys to critique the last few that pe where people sent in multiple paintings. So I would prefer if everybody was off of mute so you can contribute to the discussion. I really, I miss seeing people being able to interact all together. Um, is that okay with everyone? Let's see if I can see everyone at the same time. You have no idea how much I can talk. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> all right. So my first question is Shannon here. She is the first stop. She might not be here. I don't see her on the list. No, Shannon's not here. That's a shame. Okay. So here's how I'm going to start. Um, Shannon's work. Oh, Shannon, really? Yeah. Um, so she's Can not. I mean, she's not in the audience. Does everyone know her? No. I don't believe she's here tonight. Okay. Okay, well, I'll start with hers. Um, first of all, we'll start with the poetry and the illusion of the poetry. So that means the rendering of the form, the atmosphere, the warm and cool changes, and the visual depth. So I'm a... I would like to ask each person what their, you know, feelings are about their paintings. So in this case, we'll just skip that part and we'll go right into the critique. Um, some of the notes that I took were, so the rendering of the form. The form can be translated better when there's a, well, here are my notes on it, on her, um, Form can be translated better when there's a distinct light source direction. But we clearly understand that the tree and the mountain, that we see that the illusion is that it's tree, mountains, a lake. So the, the illusion is there. It is rendered so that we understand it. It's not, it's not an abstract. Um, so the one thing that I don't see is the, is the light source from a direction of left or right. There's not a strong shadow line. 
so there's so there's just that part of the illusion is not strong. Um, when when you've got the sun shining, you you're usually you've got your warm sun on the top and you've got your cool shadows. So that's the one one area that could be improved. The atmosphere. It's, it's a really nice use of of cool colors in the distance and warm in the foreground. So her whole foreground looks quite warm. And then she's got the middle tones that are grayed down a little bit, the green. And as she goes into the distance, it cools more. So there is a lot of depth that we're, we're feeling in the painting or that I'm feeling in the painting. It just creates, it creates the right depth. So the atmosphere, the warm and cool changes. So that was what I was referring to earlier. You can see, can you see my cursor? Yes. Yeah, okay. So the, when the sun's shining, the warm, this, these areas on the tree would be warm, like a warm green, like an orangey green, and then as you get into the shadow areas, they would cool down. So what I'm seeing here is that it's reading differently because there's really cool greens at the top. So it, it's a little bit confusing. I mean, those are very fine points that can be personal choices. They don't need to be representational, but a lot of the painting is representational. So those are just small things that can be touched upon. Um, so I'm assuming that it's an emotional painting, the reason why she's painted it. I'd like to, more, to know more about that tree, unfortunately. I, I wanna discover why it's the main focus and how she felt about it is it's a very interesting tree for the Okanagan. And I'm assuming this is the Okanagan. So the, the far music. So we've got, that was the poetry and the poetry was well rendered. The music, when you walk into a room, let me put this back in. When you walk into a room and you see a painting from a distance, that's, the, that's called the, the far music. So it's the overall design, the, the darks and the lights, the notan. Um, there's a lot to really capturing somebody's attention from a distance. And you'll know if it's a really strong painting when you when you view a thumbnail of your own painting, you see it small and it's, it's like, what's there? You're, you're curious. So you, you zoom into it and you wanna know more. So when you're walking into a room, that's really the feel that you wanna get for your work is for somebody to go, oh, what's there? What, I want more of it. Um, so the far music, color harmony, focal points, the dominant area, strong patterns. And then of course, the overall simplicity in some areas, big and small areas and echoing shapes are useful. So I'm going through this probably quite quickly. I'll slow down. No, it's good. No, it's good, okay. yeah. No, it's fine. Okay. So that's the far music. We'll take a look at Shannon's. The far music. So her color harmony, it's a really strong color harmony. It's complementary palette, yellows and blues. Her fo focal point is really strong. Um, and it's, it's very obvious having an overlapping object in the foreground overlapping your distance is, is very effective in a landscape. So this For depth. overlapping the distant objects is strong. Hmm. 
Um, so design through the NOTAN. Now, I'm hoping everyone has heard of NOTANs and it's a Japanese word for, for dark and light. And when you're initially designing your paintings, it's a really good practice to make a small NOTAN, actually more than one, to design your painting before you spend all this time painting it. Um, most of the frustration in my career is just not planning enough and not spending enough time in that in that period where you're you're trying to work out the problems because it's a lot harder to work out the problems when you're painting and covering things up and you know it's it becomes frustrating so doing the notan and this is this would be considered a reverse notan i suppose because we're looking at it after the fact so if you zoom out with the black and white you can see it's a really strong focal point. Like the, um, the tree really stands out and the foreground is darker than the rest of the painting, which really gives it depth. Huh. So, <clears throat> and there's a dominant area, the dominant area being the focal point as well. And some of these strong patterns in the foreground are really, really effective. You can see that more when it's turned to black and white. So these, they're almost um, Van Gogh-like brushstrokes. It's nicely done. So there's more brushwork in the foreground than there is, the, like the, the brushwork is more detailed than the background. Also giving it the illusion of depth. Is it a pastel? It yes. is, I think. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. If we zoom in, you can see the yeah. pastel work. But still, she's given it, you know, you think it's, I don't know, I, I haven't used pastel to a great extent. And but her the the it's the brush marks or the pastel marks are really, really interesting varied between different areas of the painting. So yeah, the strong patterns. So the overall simplicity, there's area where you can just sit and rest your eyes and then you still, you still you know, move around. I feel like the, these clouds are pointing to the focal point as well. Everything seems to be going in that direction. So it, I mean, it really pulls your eye. Um, okay, so lastly, yeah, we've sort of covered on the near music. So the near music would be, you know, the brush, the brush strokes or the pastel marks and the variety of texture. So the, the variety would be the difference between this area and the back area. The clouds are really nicely rendered as well. You can see there's the shadow side, then a transition color of like a warm, this is cool, and then you've got your bright. I would imagine the photograph is a little bit overexposed here. But yeah, nice transitions. Um, yeah, hard and soft edges. Those are also apparent. There's a nice hard edge in our focal point. More soft, soft grayed out edges. I'm not sure if the those mountain peaks would have a dark edge on the on the top, but it it's not disturbing to the eye. Um, but I would imagine they kind of curve around to the back, making them warmer, slightly warmer in the cool of the blue and a little bit softer. But those are teeny tiny details, so. 
And there is some sophisticated color spots throughout. She's got some nice grays in the orange vein and adding these, these lime green spots into those gray areas are nice, to, really pleasing to look at. You know, they're scattered throughout. So that goes through all of the items for music and poetry. Does anyone have anything to add? I kind of zipped through that pretty quick. But if anyone has any comments or suggestions, no, all good. All oh, good. Okay. It's hard to commit when the person's not here. I'm yeah. here. No, I am oh, here. She's here. here. Oh, yeah. yeah, I I came in late. I just got in from the coast. Oh, so I I, 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 I must have missed you. the very beginning. So oh, yeah. did you get some of it? I'm glad I you did. got the beginning. Yeah, I'm was... looking forward to the fact that it's recorded too. So oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, good. Well, I've I've kind of settled down now. I was a bit nervous at the beginning, so it was kind of rushing through it, but I think everybody will um, start understanding what I'm trying to get across as I go through. That, that, so tree, nice. does, that tree does exist by itself on that, that mountain uh, knoll. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's very unusual. It's, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Mm -hmm. It almost looks tropical. That's why I wanted oh, to know more about it. Yeah. So I think right at the beginning, I just mentioned um, light source okay. and warm and cool changes. When the sun's hitting an object, it's like a would be a warm green and then the shadow side would be a cool green. Okay. So, I mean, those are very fine points um, that you could investigate more, but you're, you're Atmospheric perspective and everything is is very effective. So yeah, have a have a listen through the the recording. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for submitting. Um, all right, so we're we're going alphabetically backwards. So I'm going to do Michelle, you're next. Okay. So Michelle submitted these flowers and I'm going to use the same process. So I'm going to go through the illusion, the concept, the far music and the, the near music. So Michelle, do you want to just talk about well, I, how you feel about this? This is, this started as a watercolor piece of paper that yeah. I, that I laid the water on it and did some swooshes of color and froze it overnight outside. Oh, really? <laughs> so it created all this texture, this feather look that just, oh. and then I literally just painted what I felt like. So I don't know what you're gonna say, but that planning part probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a planning anyway, so there you go. And then I oh, it's, went it's back in with high fluid acrylic to do some oh. of the darks. and. I, if I, you know, if you point, it's sort of like a work in progress and it's okay if I get critique because then I know what, how to head along. And then the last step I did gouache at the edges to just oh. sort of bring it all in. And so some of that is very opaque and the rest okay. is pretty much transparent. And that's what it is. So it's- Is that, was the freezing intentional? Yes, I put it oh. on a cookie sheet, got it nice and wet, put some strong colors, like literally with my hand in a swish, oh, and then went to before. see what I got. That's cool. <laughs> very, it's very clever, I must say. I've never heard that. I know you can't do that with acrylics, but watercolor, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Okay, well, here we go. So, so essentially, your poetry concept would be aesthetic, or would it be emotional? What do you think? 
when I paint it, it's some, I'm having fun. Okay. I'm, I, that's so it's like I, free spirit kind of yes. emotional. Okay, <laughs> yes. good. Okay, so the rendering of the form and accurate drawing. So yes, the flowers do, they look three dimensional with good shadow areas. So the intention of the flowers are visible. You can tell that they're flowers, you know, um, when you're, when you're looking at the poetry, the painting can be anywhere from pure abstraction to like hyper realism. So yours kind of falls in the, in the middle. It's abstracted realism in a sense. So there's some really nice atmosphere in it. Um, because, well, maybe with the gouache, you've created that distance around the edges. It's soft and grayed down. So it goes into the distance and it creates like this mood. Okay. It's softening. So to, to the right and left with some softening and cooling. So the foreground is nice and warm. And then as you go into the distance, it cools. So it, it creates atmosphere all on its own. Um, the warm and cool changes. So you've got warm and cool changes within, within the flowers, you know, each flower. The, the focus, I don't know, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, the depth and the interesting shapes. And it is naturally believable, even though it is abstracted. So the poetry, it's, it's pleasing to the eye for sure. Um, let's see. So your emo the emotional aesthetic is the concept. And so the far music, let's have a look at the black and white. So here's the black and white. Now, I'm just going to zoom out, and that's what you would see if you were kind of walking into a room. We'll do it with the colored one, too. So with the colored one, you know, the contrast between the yellows and the blues at the bottom is very strong. And you can see that here. So your focal point because you, your intention wasn't planning, it was more freedom. Um, it doesn't have a strong focal point, but it's more of, you know, an aesthetic, emotional painting. Does it need it? Well, if you wanted to improve the eye movement, then you could put some darker, you could choose, you know, maybe, maybe you could choose this flower right here because it's in almost a, a third, you know, the... I know that, so the third. bigger one is this one here? not... Or, well, I almost picked that one. one. That's why I went dark down there. And then that one, I thought, oh, it's sort of in the wrong spot, but it was yeah. like spoke to me, so it arrived. But I okay. like the idea of that top one. I mean, that's just how I go. And so... Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's perfectly anyway. fine. <laughs> And so in the end, then I called it a hanging basket, but just to me, it's like they're hanging. Okay, over. well, let's try this. <laughs> I didn't do a no tank. Yeah, I know. And and I debated so, about that. Go so around again. As far as this being the focal point, this works better. Because what happens is when you have something looking up, it's not as it's not as it this one takes you out of the painting for out some of, reason yeah you know yeah. and whereas think, if you had it facing up it feels more inclusive it's not throwing you completely out somehow okay you know it's 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 a little bit stronger going that way but <laughs> i mean you could choose this one and kind of make it a um, 3 that you have some play between. So using some of these darker blues, you could just pump that up so that it yeah. comes out more. But that's personal, personal choice. 
but it would create more eye movement, I would say. But when you go into these areas, these are really interesting, complicated colors, but they all are within the same value, which makes it really strong. It's a strong notan, even though there's very little contrast. It's like a middle key kind of painting. So everything kind of falls into a value of four, let's say. Um, okay, so strong patterns. Yeah, very nice strong patterns in these, in these areas and repeating kind of patterns. Um, there is some simplicity where your eye can rest in these areas. Yeah. These areas are a little bit calmer, kind of keeps you in. There's big and small objects and areas as well. So you've got small brushwork, larger brushwork, that's effective. Um, right, so the near music is when you zoom in and you can see. So we, I've already spoken about it, but you know, the nice variety of, of shapes. And you've got also soft and hard edges. Some of these are softened into each other, which creates some nice, you know, um, sophisticated color as you're melding your primary or your complementary colors together. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's lots of potential. If you're not finished with it, like just pop these three out and then it's fantastic. Then. That's all it really needs. Thanks. Great. You're welcome. Does anyone else have anything to add? Very pretty. Colors. Very pretty. Love the colors. Oh, yeah. What size is it? Um, about uh, nine by or 12 by 14, 14, I don't know, in that ballpark. Right. So then I, I glued the paper to a cradle mm -hmm. panel and I'm just leaving it like that. And then you're going to protect it with something? You, I just have to spray it. Just spray. Mm -hmm. That way it becomes the same shininess. Yeah. Because that's the biggest distraction of doing this. But I mm -hmm. just had more fun. And when you get up really <laughs> close, like like this top, very top <laughs> one, you can see the feathers. You can see what the ice did. See that little purpley one at right at the edge? Yeah. If, yeah can you there. zoom in on that? You can see what the ice does in, oh, in yeah. lots of places. That's what it does. So you see oh, yeah. that, that one that you wanted to highlight the yellowy one. Yeah, it's already here. there. That's hmm, what happens. That's from the ice. Yeah. That's interesting. All right. Anyway, it's so much fun. <laughs> that's a process everybody should try. It sounds, it so sounds fun. fun. <laughs> Oh, there, you must have All frozen right. yours too. <laughs> no. So this is, this is Kit. Yeah. And Kit, do you want to just talk to about it? Sure. Uh, this is an this abstract is collage. Well, this is something I've been, I've been doing since Christmas. I just took all my landscape paintings and put them to the side because I just needed something different. So I've been making, um, Digitally, I've been making stencils, which I can then cut on uh, my Cricut uh, cutter. So I cut them out of a uh, Durlar material. So it's it's a plastic oh. that's very easy to use as a stencil, but it's quite tough. So I, I've been doing all these stencils, uh, flowers, uh, trees, all sorts of stuff. And um, where I got to was I started printing through the with a jelly plate onto tissue oh. and then what I wanted to see if I could do was if I could keep the effect of the stencil but with different colored tissues um, change it up 
so I printed the same stencil on about 40 different pieces of tissue in different colors. Oh, wow. And I picked out okay. some colors that I thought would be interesting together. And then <clears> I started to uh, trim them up and put them in the right place so that it continued the design. So I've got kind of an abstract design and I'm really bad at abstraction, really, really bad. So this is also like, you know, pushing me to step out of my comfort zone and try something different. Um, so yeah, I, I, I basically did this and I just, and then the final coat after I put this, this is done on watercolor paper. And then the final coat is I took the stencil and put soft gel uh, through it so that mm. areas of the branches are matte um, and the negative spaces are shiny. And it, right. it, it kind of, there's something about it when you look at it in, in life that you just can't photograph. Um, yeah, there's some, you know, hence my that. question in the email about, about that. But anyway, so yeah, this is just like totally like, out of my wheelhouse, but I just thought it was interesting and I thought I'd get your comments on it. Yeah, cool. Okay. So I'll use the same process. So mm -hmm. the poetry and illusion. So in this, um, essence it's it's pure abstraction and the subject is suggestive in nature I I felt myself and the shapes kind of suggest coral or organic in nature mm -hmm. um, so a lot of you know some of the items like accurate drawing and atmosphere and form aren't important when you're going to a pure abstraction. Um, the atmosphere and accurate drawing, yeah, don't apply. There are, there's warm and cool changes as well as some depth uh, because of the, the, the color changes. So it creates some, you know, dynamic movement of the eye and, and these interesting, you know, they're kind of like abrupt changes but they, they contribute to sort of, I don't know, it's like a, it's, it's not, there is a time period when this kind of art was introduced into the world, but I don't know, I'm not an art historian, unfortunately. Um, so would you consider it aesthetic as your concept? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was exploration was a big okay. part of it. And, you know, definitely driven by a, a aesthetic. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, aesthetic and emotional journey, yeah. really. Exploration, that's nice. So music from the far, switch to black and white. So here it is in a reverse note down. So I'll just zoom out mm -hmm. so you can see what stands out the most? And as you come in, so you can see the strong patterns and interesting texture. The one area that's lacking is that it, there's no calm area. Mm -hmm. How big is this piece? Uh, 10 by 10. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just the, there's no calm space for your eye to rest. So that might be a consideration when doing doing others. Mm -hmm. So you have like a an area that's kind of like the surface of the water where you you get to just kind of sit for a minute. Um, there's lots of echoing shapes and the color harmony works. You know, there's um, let's see echoing when shapes and color harmony. Yeah. Yeah, it could, it could use more attention to eye movement as an abstract, mm -hmm. kind of that's, that's one area in abstract that you have to kind of use to your advantage because there is no real subject matter. Um, here, this is the highest, um, contrast so you're white and then against your dark so those two shapes I just feel like when you 
from a distance, you just play between these two. Mm -hmm. And there might be opportunity to make stronger contrast. These could be stronger contrasting shapes or the lines could go in a different angle so that you do get more, more eye movement. I don't know, when you look at this one from a distance, does that happen to, does any, Anybody feel that same way? Oh, you yeah. kind of interplay between these? It, yeah. I find the attention just zaps to that that area right in there. And then yeah. it doesn't yeah. really leave. It doesn't really go back out at all. Yeah, Maybe so you stay Because there. that white is also the only one that doesn't have a piece of branch on it. Well, it, it does um, with the gel. Like if you're actually looking at the piece oh. of white, oh, yeah. it's got yeah, it's that clear. texture going over top of it, but it's impossible to see um, on the, on, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I was hoping to get more eye movement from the lines in the stencil, but it was just too much. There was too many lines and it just too much. Yeah, there. you might. Are you able to paint over top to calm an area? Oh yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I can, I can still paint on it. I haven't tried that. Okay. But I could- I see a deer's area. eye in it. Like, it's <laughs> just so, it's so vivid. Oh, right here. Anyone else? Oh, where? Right here? No, go up, go up, go straight up. Okay, go to the left, go down. No, go down, oh, right go here. to the right. Go to the right, oh. go up a little bit, up, up, right. up, up, straight up. There you go. Oh, <laughs> no, down a little. There you go. You just about got it. There you got it. Oh, yeah. I don't see the deer. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's some other ones. <laughs> Anybody? Is it just me? Okay. Oh, my God. God help me. <laughs> so we can take a closer look. This right there here. it is. There's the eye right there. No. Okay. Well. Right there. Oh, to me, that's, oh, it's just a deer's eye. I noticed it first when you went to the black and white. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's more apparent. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. Some, somebody was watching you while you were doing that, Kit. Yeah. Now I see it though. I was okay. also. <laughs> now you can't unsee it. You can't no, unsee I can't it. unsee it. <laughs> I was also um, uh, like I started another one where I tore the paper in less regular shapes, and that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And I left more of it very very light. Because mm -hmm. oh, yeah. here you've got the contrast between organic and sharp edges. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the organic on organic would be interesting to see. So is your yeah. top layer through the stencil uncolored, not colored? Uh, the 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 final the, the final, base the final coat on this was I put the stencil down over top of the collage, the same stencil that I'd used to print all yeah. the papers, and I smeared. I took a palette knife and smeared. Well, actually, it's almost like a cake knife and smeared soft gel through the stencil and then lifted it up. Mm. So where the stencil was is just, um, well, it's tissue, it's matte. And then the negative spaces are shiny and, and kind of thick. Mm. And that's just clear gel, that's just clear gel. I didn't have any neutral colors in it either. And I was hoping I would get some sort of neutralized colors by layering the tissue, but it didn't kind of really happen that way. These areas here or are those? Yeah, it's a little neutral, but it's not, it's not okay. neutral enough to offset all of the very uh, strong colors. Mm. But see, I really like this part in the navy blue where it is gray and then mm -hmm. brown, sort of goes mm -hmm. to brown, that straight down swoop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, has a lot of variety. I like all that. Yeah, oh, very cool. Well, that's very cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So where it's dark blue lines in the orange, did you paint those? Nothing is dated. Um, there's basically two types of when I'm when I'm printing the stencil on the jelly plate, 
you get um, what I what I call a first pull. So that is where you get the branches in nothing. They're not printed, and you get the strong colors everywhere else. So that's like the strong orange and the strong uh, ultramarine blue and those ones. Okay. The other ones are when you finish doing that, you lift the stencil and you get what's called a ghost. So now when you print it on tissue, you get the lines on white. So you get a colored line on, on, on white tissue instead of having a white line on colored tissue. So um, I've got okay. both kinds in each color. So in each color that I printed, because it's the part of the process, I end up with all this tissue. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I just take the piece out, out of the, the either the solid color or the ghost and collage it, collage it in and overlap them. And the process that could just kind of drive you crazy actually, because I have to find the right piece out of a particular piece of tissue to go in the right place on the collage. Yeah. But it was just an experiment and I, I thought it was kind of interesting. I just wanted your views. Yeah, that's Very fun. Cool. 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 Okay, so next up is Greta. Is that how you say your name, Greta? I say Greta. Greta? Mm -hmm. Greta. All right, here we go. So pure abstraction. <clears throat> Do you want to talk about it? Um, well, there was a painting underneath it, and I got tired of it. So I tried to create something else with it. And um, I just started playing with it, and this is what I ended up with. OK. So, so it was basically intuitive, kind of free-spirited. Is that how you kind of approached it? That's basically it, yes. OK. So there's, with pure abstraction, like kits, there's little rendering of form or drawing to critique. The atmosphere, visual depth, it, this, this painting, for me, it created a feeling of like the depths of the earth and then emerging up to the sky, that kind of feel. So there was, there was good warm, cool changes. Um, with a complementary palette and it, it the complementary palette and kind of that feeling of atmosphere up at the top the distance kind of it was a nice interplay between those two areas um, as far as the illusion goes the concept like you said was you know intuitive and pure abstraction so far music let's go to the black and white and have a look um there's two there okay so color let's let's go back here one second with the color so the color harmony, it's a straight complementary red, orange, blue, green palette. The focal point, there's no real strong focal point that's apparent in the black and white no tan. Um, it's not always important, but like what I was talking about with kits, it creates more opportunity for eye movement in your painting if you do have a, an area that's specifically the focal point. I was hoping um, that the focal point would be the little pebbles on the right, left hand side, right there. Yeah, these ones here. Yes. Okay. So from so, how you can test if it worked as the focal point is to kind of zoom out. You've taken a photo of it. It's either take a photo of it and zoom out or look at your artwork in a mirror. Mm -hmm. So you, so it's, ref, it's what you would see if you're walking into a room from a distance. Right. So it gives you a totally different perspective and you can kind of pick up on things that aren't correct mm -hmm. and you don't see them when you're standing in front of your painting. So those are kind of two kind of tools you can use to double check whether your focal point works. Okay. 
Um, see the the focal point kind of is in all the same value as as this whole area. Right. Um, so there are ways to kind of pump that up. <clears throat> there is really playful texture um, that keeps the movement of it going. So you've got some really great texture here and these stones are, uh, you know, they catch the eye, but we'll talk about how we can pump that up in a sec. So dominant areas, um, there's no strong dominant areas and that's maybe why the, the eye movement isn't as strong as you could get it. Strong patterns, there's some interesting wavy patterns but all within the same value. There's some nice simplicity up here where you can, you know, kind of calm and then get back into the texture and the interest. And there's some big and small areas and echoing shapes. So I did go and do a new Notan where I just highlighted a few of those areas that you spoke about. And so if you zoom out on this one and you zoom out on this one, all I've done is just lightened the area around your stones mm -hmm. to kind of bring your eye to that point. So it's something simple that you could, you could try. I can try it right now with the um, sorry, the dodge tool. So you could do this with color and you could use the blue instead of what I'm doing. I'm just lightening the area. Um, I don't know if, if you have a big blue, oh, there's one, that's one focal point for you, sorry. <laughs> So just, you know, adding one spot, looking at it from a distance and seeing if it kind of gives you that feeling mm -hmm. of, so you kind of want to enter into a painting at, at a point. And if you don't have a strong area, then it's hard to enter the painting and then move around. So keep that in mind. Um, when, I know it's it's fun to, I just love doing these. Like they're so expressive and, um, but when you're in it, sometimes you have to step away from it and go, what can I do just to bring somebody into it and keep them in it? That's one of the goals of, of painting. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. So variety of shapes There's for the near music, like if you're standing in it, um, standing close by it, there's so many interesting things to look at. How big is it? 12 by 12. Oh, it's tiny. Okay. So yeah, there's lots of variety of textures, lots of variety of shapes. Interesting. You know, are those cracks? Like these little areas here? Um, there's cheesecloth in there. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you just maybe work on the far music because the near music is really dynamic. Okay. Lots happening. There's lots of hard and soft edges. And because some of those colors are blending together, it, becomes more sophisticated in the color combinations. You could add, you could add some of this blue as your focal point, just so that there is, you keep the color harmony. But those are things you have to kind of give, give a try. Any other comments or questions? No, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Beautiful. And okay, next up is Gary. 
get over here. One moment. Okay. All right. So Gary's sent in this painting from, we've dated it, 2013. Do you want to talk to this, Gary? There's just a couple of deer that were out in uh, my backyard where I lived up there. And I thought I, I took a photograph of them and I just painted it. It was one of my first acrylics. Oh, wow. That's great. First, one of your first acrylics. Yeah. That's great. So you, um, do you know how big it is, roughly? It's um, 14 by 20, I believe. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, so the poetry, the concept, and the reason you paint something, what, what brought you to paint this? I just like painting wildlife. Yeah, it's fun. They're very cute and curious, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so emotional and a bit of a narrative is along with that. He's kind of questioning you, it seems. You know, sometimes you can kind of create a story about the animals or um, a person or even a flower in a garden. You can, you can create a narrative by naming it a certain way, well, which browses. gives, pardon? Is it, I named it Winter Browsers. Yeah, they're browsing around looking for all sorts of yummy things. So, so, so there's the rendering of the form. Some work could be done using soft edges on the form just to create more of a, a rounded edge on the top of the body. Um, cylind like the deer's bodies are usually cylindrical. So kind of softening that top edge would create more of a, a cylindrical feel. Mm -hmm. um, that's quite a, I mean, acrylics sometimes are, are difficult because they do dry up so quickly. So as, as you're putting those edges on, you can just soften them at the same time, kind of blend them into the background. And it gives it, you've actually done it kind of with this, deer here into mm. the background so yeah you just see that bit of an edge it's very small small details um yeah the deer on the right is really well like well rendered accurate and we feel it's surprised at being spotted so you you get the emotion from the deer is kind of questioning what we're doing there's an area just between the two deer that seems different than the background that we see behind in the large area. So this area right here is just a little bit confusing because it's quite a bit lighter than, than right here. So just take a look and see if you can create more, more harmony in the background between those two areas. Um, let's see. So from a distance, does that make sense, Gary? Yeah. Do you see that area here? Yeah, probably back on the left here. I would have had some more snow back there. You would have seen what it was. Yeah. There's still snow on the ground and it was running into the background. Yeah, I understand. I, I, yeah, that could very well I be. I didn't really uh, paint anything in the back. I just pulled some greens down. Oh, I see. And this might, is... might messed it up a bit. Oh, this can just be easily just, you know, it just seems like it needs to be in line with the rest. Mm-hmm. Or either that or add the snow onto one of the sides of the, the deer, just so it's not 
ambiguous. It's just a little bit ambiguous, that's all. Yeah. Um, so the color harmony is really nice in this, in these greens, because you've got, you know, it's like a, a blanket of forest. It's very calming. And, you know, you've got the warm green and the cool greens in here. It's a nice color combination. And then the deer, of course, are a reddish brown. So you've got a um, like a complementary red green palette, which is pleasant. Um, one area for the far music that I noticed. So here's the note N. So the dominant the dominant feature is this one deer here and his face. If you wanted to make it a bit of a stronger design, you could just crop it to the, to the left so that the deer's face is more in a third. So you can kind of see it here. This mm -hmm. is the original one. The face is right in the center. And sometimes that you lose opportunity for eye movement if your subject matter is in the center, depending on your design. If it's a, if it's a design with using an A or a V and your, your focal point is in the center, it works. But if it's like this, where your focal point is smack bag, um, smack dab in the center, you don't get the opportunity to go elsewhere. So think about cropping it, oops, sorry, just cropping it on the left if you can, or if you choose to mm -hmm. repaint it, it's really cute. You could just move the face to, to a third and then you get more opportunity, you know, to move around. I like this branch here, kind of keeps you in on the edge, the overlapping. And by cropping it, this kind of this tree kind of keeps you in as well. Whereas here it might take you out. So if you crop that off, it kind of holds you in the painting. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of blocking you from leaving. And this one's bringing you in. So just that simple crop made made a difference. That makes sense. Yeah. Good. Um, so overall simplicity, there's some nice, nice simple areas, nice calm areas, and it gives a feeling of atmosphere to it. Although it's not, it doesn't show much distance. It does kind of hear it kind of goes into the distance because it's lighter. Um, and near music. So variety of shapes. There's there's definitely different um, brushwork. You've got the smaller brushwork on the fur, large brushstrokes in the back. Um, the hard and soft edges. So yeah, working on some of the harder edges where they could be softened would be a good exercise. Mm -hmm. And you've got You've got nice form here. You've got the, the cool areas on the side of the face. And so when you're, when everyone's painting, it doesn't matter what it is. Think of your object, if it's a person's leg or a deer's nose, think of it as a cylinder or a cube or a cone. Think of it as a, an object, not as, an animal or a person and you'll you'll be able to notice like value changes and color changes as you move around the object so the one rule that's really important to follow if you're trying to do representational is your light if your light source is warm then your shadow is cool if you're light, so that would go for most of the daytime. 
in the moonlight, if you're up outside in the moonlight, just observe when the moon is shining, it's a blue light, it's a cool light and your shadows are warm. It's really, mm -hmm. it's really important to, yeah, observe those things. So most of the time, sometimes in the winter, you'll be getting reflections from, from the snow, which will cool down your subject matter and you'll get, you'll get light underneath the animal that is cooler. So even if that brown was slightly bluer underneath here, it's more representational of what is in reality. So cooling down an area under here, and maybe the it's a it's a cloudy day, maybe it's cooler light and then warmer shadows. You'd have to observe it. And sometimes it's tricky with photographs. So just when you're out and about, just take a look around and on a cloudy day, on a sunny day, and see if you can determine which, which light you see. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, it's beautiful. So yeah, that's, do you have any questions about that? Anyone, Gary? That's good, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? I just wanted any? to, I just wanted to say that it might have because all the ears line up in a row it might have been mm -hmm. better for that far deer to have the ears a bit shorter yeah it it is a repeating pattern it is a bit ambiguous with this deer in front but even if it was moved over so that it there's some form there's a separation between the two but yeah, just because there is this kind of two eyes beside each other, it, it could be confusing. You could just gray this, this one down a little bit so this one stands out more. Mm -hmm. But you kind of have in this area, or you could just move it over if you have a reference photo. I, I love the change when you cropped it. I thought mm -hmm. that made just a huge difference, um, even in terms of like the repetition of the ears kind of becomes a strength at that point. And um, yeah, you know, the positive and the negative shapes and stuff. I, I just, the, the cropped version just looks quite, yes. quite different than the, than, the, than the uncropped version. Yeah, it's, it's a different dynamic for sure. And it's such a simple change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's very good. Fun. All right. So no, I think that everyone's good with that. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. So we've got Evelyn next. And Evelyn, do you want to speak about this? Um, yes, I was just doing something, you know, very outside of the box for me, very um, experimental. Um, yeah. I was using different um, stencils, like I was cutting shapes, starting with a big shape and then changing the shapes to smaller shapes. Uh, very limited palette, I think only maybe three colors and mm -hmm. um, spraying the paint rather than brushing it on. So, oh, okay. Um, you know, when I, I don't normally do anything figurative. So it was kind of a little bit of an experiment into a little bit of a abstracted figurative uh, model, yeah. right? So, yeah. Um, so it was it just meant to be, it, I'd never tried anything quite that um, experimental before. And, uh, you know, just cutting different shapes of stencils to give the um, outline sort of, of of some of the body of the shapes, right? Yeah, it's almost like printmaking. Kind of, yeah. Because of the stencils, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, I'm just trying to find you on my, on my 
next slide for a sidebar. All right. Okay, so my notes start with the so the concept with that it's more well, it's experimental, but it's more of an aesthetic feel, I would imagine, or emotional. Yeah, I guess maybe a little How bit. Would you? Right. I do want to have a little bit of an emotional. Um, it almost has a Madonna feel to it. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, it is purely, yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, there is feeling. There is there is emotion in her position, you know, in the positioning. So was there a live model? No, it's just totally made up. Oh, okay, cool. No. Difficult to do. Totally imaginative, yes. <clears throat> yeah, so the accurate drawing isn't as important because of the nature of the abstraction. Um, the visual depth, it has depth from the darks under the neck that creates that shadow area. So it gives you that feeling that, you know, it's kind of um, maybe, maybe there's an emotion hidden in there somewhere or you can make something up. <laughs> um, there's one area, so there's just one area that doesn't seem believable to me only because it's changed its color. So going from the white in the highlight areas of the face and then to orange, I mean, you could just add orange to these areas to make it look have, like that it's the same light source, but okay, I don't mm -hmm. know. Do you see what yeah, I mean? And, and like you know what? It's not really a finished piece yet either. So I wasn't really oh, sure okay. where else to, um, you know, make it, you know, stronger. So yeah, I can see what you're saying that burnt sienna in that area is very strong compared to, I think I was just using three colors, you know, like, yeah, 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 exactly. Would you be able to take some of that off? I could probably try lifting it off or making more dark or burnt sienna into the, you know, mm -hmm. elsewhere. Um, yeah, these contrasts. Maybe into the hair or something. I have, yeah, there's definitely a possibility Yeah, these contrasts there. are really nice. Like these three contrasts look really strong um, in the design. Yeah. Only because it's a figurative, I struggled just with this dark area, that's all. Mm -hmm. okay. If it was yeah. a little bit less dark, it would it would flow better just between those light areas. I mean, that's picking it <laughs> apart. Um, let's get back to the visual poetry and music. So the depth, yeah, the depth is there because of the dark. Um, the natural blue believability yeah we can instantly tell that it's a woman and it's very minimally re rendered so it's you know it's uh it's a success and doing that from your mind is it's a real it's a challenge to do uh, music from the distance so the color harmony you're using yellow, blue, purple, so maybe a split complementary color palette along those lines. So that works well, it's harmonious. Your notan, it's super strong because it's got that contrast. So I noticed the chin only when I turned it into the notan mm -hmm. because it, sort of when you see it in black and white it looks like a beard yeah I was going to say it almost looks like a beard <laughs> yeah so yeah. <laughs> that's when I noticed it was like oh wait a minute if only that could just be a little bit lighter <laughs> yeah 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 mm -hmm. but it's a strong design you know you've got some good eye movement it keeps you in there's some interesting shapes coming up to kind of keep you going around um strong patterns. The focal point seems to be these white areas and, you know, the thirds. 
Uh, so strong patterns of the hair make up the far music. Interesting, but these could take you out. They could just be softened along the okay. edge mm -hmm. or not. Um, I like this ambi ambiguous line here because it's so soft and it goes into the yellow again. So, you know, that those are nice areas you don't see very often. Um, so there's some simplicity as well in these calm areas. There's large dark areas, there's small areas. So there's some good variety. Creative shapes, yeah. Hard and soft edges, yeah. Some nice blending. There's some good transitions that create more, you know, more complex colors. And so these dots, are those dots on the actual paper? It, yes, because it, 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 the color was sprayed on only, like yeah. out of a spray bottle. How did you spray it? Oh, a spray I just bottle. got, awesome. you know, little spray bottles and just filled them yeah. with, what. this is watercolor. So, you know, with okay. watercolor. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you could just add water and kind of pull off a little bit at a big mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, only because I'm seeing it now with, I really liked that black and white. That actually mm -hmm. is very impressive. That's something I'm going to remember to do uh, when I'm yeah. taking photographs of my work from here on. on. Um, yeah. And I have been watching a lot of medieval things lately. Uh, this was done, you know, several years ago or, you know, oh, okay. this, this attempt. So, I mean, it's nothing to totally current, but um, along the line of that medieval theme, you know, with the, uh, I think it's called chiaroscuso um, effect, you know, with the really, really dark background, um, like a Caravaggio, is that something I maybe should pursue instead of leaving the background light-ish, really pushing the background mm. very dark? and really making this look like a Madonna. I don't know. I don't know, let's see. Dark, dark or? Yeah, probably dark, dark. Would have to be darker Black. than the hair, you know? You'd have to choose a color that's Good. It could destroy it, but or it could make it more dramatic. I don't know. Kind of gives you an idea. Uh huh. Can you see that? It's hard to say that. That could be a possibility, though, right? Yeah. I mean, that I makes it even it more dramatic. It does. Yeah. Can you make I haven't a whole thought new about one? that until just now, but uh, that could maybe yeah. be a possibility. I mean, it's just an experimental thing anyway, so. Yeah. Try another version that's mm -hmm. more contrast. Yeah, you could do that. All right, we better get a move on because we still have quite a few people. Um, Delora is next. Sorry to, to rush here. All right, so Okanagan landscape. Um, Delora, I just wanted to know if you had thought about the focal point and the concept when painting. Yeah, well, I was actually, I, it was a scene from uh, Sparkling Hills that I, and I guess it was more the distant shore that I was kind of looking at. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, the color okay. here, yeah, that's better. It was, the color is a bit warmer now because the front was quite warm. Um, Here was, is this the wrong image? No, that's the right image. Sorry, okay. it just sh was showing up on my screen quite um, faded, so. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so um, poetry. So the, the tree shapes, and the warm and cool transition from one side to the other is well done. So what I was talking about earlier, where you've got the warm 
on the sun side and the cool on the, so that's very apparent in these trees. You can really see that, these warm greens and these cool greens, nicely mm -hmm. rendered. The atmospheric perspective in the trees at the bottom here, <coughs> I found this interesting because you've got atmospheric perspective here and these trees look really far away, right? And it's they were way actually... down the hill. They yeah. were? Yeah. So now here's, here's, here's my concern. So as you go into the distance, your colors um, are cool, but then they're getting warmer. Right. And I see the light sources coming this way towards your trees and some light here, not much light here, but then I see this going into the distance and it's pink. So what, what I find when I look at this painting is that it's, it creates the illusion of being flat. So you're not creating the illusion of distance. Okay. You are with these trees. These have such good atmosphere, like they're really kind of dramatic. But having that pink in there because it's warm, it just comes forward a lot. Oh, okay. So if if it was muted and grayed back, it would go in the distance. Now you can break these rules if you want, um, it just, it'll just look more flat and less dramatic. Right. So if your focal point were these trees and the, the lake going into the distance, kind mm. of, you know, having big wide open space and that feeling of, of largeness, it's having the warm in the distance kind of is counterintuitive to that. Okay. Does that makes sense? Yeah, here I was thinking that pink was a cool color, but. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, because well, it, ma into... it was magenta, so I was thinking that's cool. So. It's a cool red, I suppose, yeah. yeah. But you're right, it does look warm now that I'm seeing it here. Yeah, and it comes forward. So, I mean, yeah. if you were to, like, you've got the reds in here, which is great. And then these are cooler blues, but then you could go grayer, grayer and cooler. Right. This, this is warmer than this one. And this one's in front. So you switch those blues and then gray down this hill. Okay. Kind of blue a gray blue it'll go away and um I'm getting too much into the detail but um I would just try to observe what's happening on the lake and whether these lines are representational I understand what you're doing you're kind of bringing your eye movement this way yeah just have a look as to what actually happens in that area I'm not a hundred percent sure because I don't I haven't seen your reference but yeah the, and the these... photo actually was just pretty washed out there on the lake so oh, okay. I'm making, making stuff up okay so just have a look at a different lake image and just see what would okay. what would be more accurate I think these okay. reflections are nice because you've got the warm in the cool that works really well. So um, I'll, I'll just get back to, so the, the far music. Um, so what I wanted to ask initially was what's important in the painting? The distance you said was your focal point? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I- okay. I don't know what I was. That's okay. I, the, I like the trees and then, but I, so I wasn't sure which should be more important. 
maybe the trees are more important. Well, let's see, I've got something to show you as far as the far music goes. So this is your Notan. Okay. Um, so you see, you don't really see distance in the black and white. Right. It's very all together. Yeah. Which works in, um, in a lot of paintings that aren't landscape. If you want to create the atmosphere, then here's, here's one where I've just created the atmosphere for you by lightening the black and white. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you sense. take a look at that versus that. So now, and I've also darkened this area. Okay. So right. now this is the most important. Yeah, that makes sense. Which is, to me, the most interesting brushwork. Mm -hmm. And then, then you've got all of this um, kind of into. Now you can, you feel that feeling of distance and it's, it's far away, you know, it's a whole other feeling. That's and it's really yeah. subjective, if that's yeah. what you want. You no, I really... that or yeah, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. And when somebody walks in, they'll go, look at those beautiful trees. And then, oh, it's so expansive. You know, so those are kind of things you want to think about when you're planning your paintings. Right. What, what feeling do you want to portray? That's the mistake when you paint from a photo because the photo makes everything dark in the background, right? Yeah. It does. So yeah. Um, you've got some nice calm areas, you know, where where your eye can rest as far as the far music goes. Uh, the near music, you've got nice variety of shape. You know, interesting brushwork. It kind of draws your eye around the trees, nice curve to it. Um, there are some hard edges that could be softened and mostly what I saw was in this area. Right. I don't know if those are necessary hard edges or well, along I was the trying ridge. To, I was trying to put uh, the light hitting those points because it was kind of coming from that ah, direction, okay. hitting them. So that's why I, I did outline those. Oh, okay. Okay. But you're no right. Worries. Off of it. it does stand out and it brings yeah. it forward. Exactly. The tree. Yeah. Anyone else? It's almost nine, so I better. Well, thank you very on. much. But you're welcome. Um, you're welcome to comment, anyone, if you wanted to quickly. All good. Okay, let me just get to Claudia. Is Claudia here? Claudia, Claudia. couldn't be here tonight. Um, she will be watching uh, the recording. Um, she okay. Has a conflicting meeting. Okay, I'll read my notes then. Um, so poetry, I'm. I'm assuming that the concept is like emotional and descriptive, just from the nature of the, the subject matter. Um, the warm and cool and atmospheric changes can be seen throughout the landscape. There's visual depth and atmosphere as what well, are well rendered. So you can see, you know, there's these soft areas, you can really see the depth of field. There's where the soft area is that's into the distance, even though it's close by, that's well done. And then the sharp edges are on top. Um, there's natural believability and good drawing, good rendering of the form. The form, the bear requires a little more work in creating that three-dimensional effect. I don't know if it's the photograph or not, 
Um, but there would be light bouncing around. And like I was saying before, the body is a cylinder. So you kind of have to create that plateau on the back of the bear in a certain value and color. And then as you come around, there'll be changes. And then underneath there'll be other changes. So observing those in your photographs, if you can, if you can find those, zoom in. Um, if I zoom into the nose, you can see there's some good form on the nose. You've got the curve and the underside. So you can see that it's a cylinder, but there's some flat areas that could be worked on like along the back. And then again, softening the edge so that it goes into the background because it goes away into the distance. Um, <clears throat> The far music is good. You've got a strong, it's a strong design, the notan. It's clear what the subject matter is and the focal point. And there's interplay between the fish and the bear, which is very strong. Um, you can see it here, here's the fish. This, could be actually the focal point because it's the most rendered part of the painting. See how this really has strong form and it's the highest saturation of the entire painting. The positioning of it could be better by moving it a little farther into the painting. But it's, it's a nice um, combination of, of predator and prey. And these, these um, leaves back here, you really get a sense of it. It's mm -hmm. um, highly, highly rendered, but because all of this is soft, they really, they are, they have such great, such a great feel. Um, let's see, the near music, there's lots of variety of shapes and brushwork. So yeah, the only thing I would really focus on is trying to get more form into the bear. Any comments? Beautiful. Yeah. And you see this distance, she's done that really well is the, the distance oh. I, I yeah. implore that, that's very good. Okay, and we've got, okay, so Audrey's our last one. We're just about on point here. <clears throat> so Audrey, do you wanna talk about your painting for a sec? Um, so this one was, the, the photo was taken in Ontario and of course uh, walking along Lake Ontario with the wind and I saw the branches moving. I mean, it was such a windy day. And I specifically focused on the ones that were in that kind of composition because I, I just loved the movement. Um, mm -hmm. When I submitted the photo, I was really struggling with the foreground because of all the rocks. And, and then I had to simplify them in my mind and on the canvas. And of course, since okay. then, I've also added highlights and et cetera, et cetera. So um, descriptive, emotional narrative, I guess, um, for concept, because I, it is telling a story of a very windy day. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the bush itself is my focal point uh, with highlights now, of course, added to it. Absolutely, yeah, okay. Well, um, let me go through. Yeah, so you've got the concept, emotional and descriptive. So you've captured the feeling. Like it's really obvious that you wanted to express that wind in your hair kind of feeling. Um, the atmosphere of the water and going from light to dark. So this is something Audrey can, has observed in this painting is that where your light source is in, a, in, a, um, in the ocean, there will be changes in the light across the water from dark to light. 
So keep that in mind when you're taking a look at your photos. The sky also changes from dark to light. The water will change from dark to light well, as it goes towards your light source. So that's, that's well observed. Uh, the light source is coming from the left to the right from how the stones are talking down here. Mm -hmm. um, the shadow underneath the bush, it could be simplified possibly by joining some of those colors and uh, maybe, you know, creating um, an area where all the values are the same. Mm -hmm. but the colors are different yep so yeah just a stronger shadow area I know it's fl it's fluffy and light but you know you could you could just get rid of some of those highlights okay in just in the shadow area I, um, it would just make it like more of a a strength area um, I'll explain that a little bit more um the shadow areas i'll go right into it okay just only because i know audrey <laughs> <laughs> and i know your work so um your shadow areas could be more colorful like here's here's a colorful one and a lot of the time when people are painting from photo reference they paint black shadows but the shadow if you i mean in most instances the shadows are not black they're very colorful and they're not even close to how how dark the photo takes so try to light when you're painting your shadows try to lighten your photograph so that you can see the shadow colors because they are beautiful these ones are nice and colorful these ones are starting to get muddy mm -hmm. and there's opportunity for nice color spots to be placed here and there. Okay. See this nice blue that could be right into the underneath even. And then some nice um, auburns, auburn shadows, okay. like competing, kind of um, vibrating with the blue. Mm -hmm. So in the same value range though. Okay. Yeah. Um, so far music. So many of the master painters all catch their value range within four values. And this painting has done a good job at that. It's all mid range. And then there's darks and lights, small spots of darks and lights. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a three value no tan and it creates a strong design. The, this log shape at the edge of the water mm -hmm. is well placed because it creates a place for your eye to stop and not go out of the painting. So sometimes if you don't have something like that, you'll just go, oh, down the beach and gone. So it keeps your eye in, and, it, and this also keeps your eye in. This log or rock is a little bit amb ambiguous for me. It could be a stone, it could be a log, and I'm not quite sure. Um, it, do you, can you tell me? Uh, it is, it's a, the beach is lined with these massive big stones that just stand upright because the, the surface of under the water is like shale. It's um, they're all flat stones or limestone or I can't remember what they are there, but they're all flat. Okay. They just come in layers, but they the beaches there along Lake Ontario, this particular area, they have these massive big rocks. They're, the kids sit on them, you know, just watch the waves. So uh, uh, maybe I didn't render that properly. Well, just have another look at it and see if it's 
I think it's it's important to have something there because mm -hmm. it it does kind of give you eye movement but it could just be simplified or okay um yeah you see you've got your dark areas here your dark areas here so there is some good play between them mind mm -hmm. you if you did darken this area or mm -hmm. keep it all in one value maybe that would not be necessary anymore okay you could try it in photoshop and see i'm right, gonna do it for you in a second and see okay it doesn't do you need it thing does it doesn't add anything no so there you go there we are okay cool Very good. um near music yeah there's a variety of shapes and brushwork dark color spots in the shadows which are really effective so yeah nice note down nice small bits of dark small bits of lights well done okay thank you you all did very well i'm impressed well that was really awesome kato oh yeah thank good. you kato yes, very thank you. very good thank you um so different to see critiques with this with music uh, i love it <laughs> it's great oh yeah music yeah I mean, yeah. it's really, yeah, it's very yeah. Uh, fitting, I think. Exactly. Can think in those terms. Yeah. Thanks. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. And, I'm, and just yeah. watch the YouTube. You'll be seeing lots. We'll be reviewing it on YouTube, too. That sounds okay, good. And well, I can email you guys that list if you need it. Oh, well, that would be, be good. Yeah, that yeah. would be great. I could post it. I'll email YouTube. it to Kit. Yeah, sure. yeah, send it, send it to me and I'll post it with the YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That really great. good. Okay. Well, All thank right. you everyone for coming tonight. Okay.